Pastor James Fadell is an Assistant General Overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God worldwide and a member of his governing council. He is a Continental Overseer and Chairman of the Executive Board of RCCG The America. He first trained as a mechanical engineer and later obtained a master's degree in operations research from Wayne State University, Detroit, Michigan in 1990. In addition, he earned an MBA from Lawrence Technological University, Southfield, Michigan in 1993. His most recent academic degree in 2012 is a Doctor of Ministry in Transformational Leadership from Backey Graduate University, Seattle, Washington. As an author and publisher, his books have been released by his own publishing company, Fidel Publishing Incorporated, to include Right Leadership, Your Forefathers and Their Kingdoms, Be an Encourager, Text and Study Guide, Oasis of Ellen, a 31-day devotional, 18 destiny helpers you need, and others. He was mentored by the General Overseer of RCCG Worldwide, Pastor E.A. Adeboye, who later commissioned Fadel for the current work. However, it started from Pastor Fadel pioneering a house fellowship in his basement in 1991, which later became the first RCCG parish in North America. Historically, the annual convention held in North America at the Redemption Campgrounds of over 700 acres in Dallas Floyd, Texas has been attended by thousands from all over the globe. Under his leadership to date, RCCG The Americas has grown from 44 countries with 1,190 parishes in three subcontinents, North, Central, and South America. Pastor Fadel also works tirelessly to develop other ministerial training programs to enable the ministers and workers of RCCG The Americas to grow into maturity in their Christian walk and service. He is a well sought after speaker who stands before gatherings of millions in Africa and the Americas. He is very passionate about developing leaders who can in turn develop other leaders to impact their spheres of influence for the kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. In May 2012, Pastor Fidel was appointed as a professor of transformational leadership with special emphasis on global immigration populations. This appointment was by Backey Graduate University, Seattle, Washington, in recognition of his academic excellence. Similarly, in September 2012, he was appointed as a visiting professor in leadership training by Redeemers University, Ede, Nigeria. By the grace of God, he is happily married to Pastor Manita, a medical doctor specialized in pediatric medicine, and they are blessed with three children. Our text today is 1 Samuel, chapter 7, verse 12 to 14. We could have read from verse 7, but just because of time, we want to read verse 12, verse 13, and verse 14. I will read verse 12, you will read 13, and together we are going to read verse 14. He said, then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mizpah and Shen, and Call its name Ebenezer, saying, Thus far the Lord has helped James Fadel. Is that what you just read? No, no, help me read it. What, what did you just read? Thus far. Oh, oh, many of you are still putting us there. Thus far the Lord has helped. 200 today. It's 232 days from January 1 till now. Who has kept you alive? Who has blessed you? Who has provided for you? Who has lifted up your head? Shout hallelujah! 
Now, together, verse 13. Together, verse 13. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. Every feeling sins in your life shall be subdued. No more ever will you see the feeling sins of your life. In the name of Jesus. And together, verse 14, together, verse 14. I don't know whether you saw those two statements underlined. It says, and the cities which the Philistines have taken from Israel we are restored. Amen? Amen. And from Ekron to Gath and Israel recovered. Is the, what is the difference between recovery and restoration? But whether you know the meaning or not, I stand on this holy altar. Everything the enemy has stolen from you, from the day you are born until now, your promotion, your health, your finances, that the enemy has stolen, they shall be restored. Yeah. I said they shall be restored. Yeah. And everything that has been taken away from you, you are going to recover them. Yeah. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. When we are saying victory at last, there are some instances in the scripture where God has given people victory at last. Number one, in Luke chapter 5, there is a man there called Peter. Jesus came there and saw two sheep and chose that of Peter. Why Peter? Why not the other sheep? But mercy. Can somebody say mercy? Mercy will find you. Mercy will locate you. Jesus will choose your boat. In the name of Jesus. They said this man fished all night and caught nothing. Amen. Jesus borrowed the sheep, and after he has borrowed the sheep, God always says thank you. Any service you render unto God, God says thank you. And for Peter, after he has finished his evangelistic work, Peter, sir, cast your net to the right side. Uh, he said, excuse me, sir, excuse me, sir, you are a preacher. <laughs> I'm a fisherman. I fish all night, but nevertheless, so that people don't say, I don't obey you, he cast one net. And what happened? A net breaking, boat sinking. <laughs> hallelujah. Catch of the day. Can somebody give me a powerful hallelujah? hallelujah? All the businesses that you have tried that have failed, all the hands that you have laid on new venture that have not succeeded, by the reason of your shouting hallelujah today, you are going to catch a boat sinking, a net breaking, amen, a people that will come to you and say, shout hallelujah on your behalf. Shout hallelujah. There is another man called Blind Bartimaeus. I don't know why we call him blind, though Jesus already healed him. But today we still call him blind. Do you know he heard that Jesus was at TOD? And he couldn't come in because he was at the gate. And he was screaming, Jesus, son of David, a TOD, have mercy on me. Instead of people there to bring him in, they never. They say, shut up. You are not the kind of person that Jesus is looking for. But eventually, the master stopped. The creator of the heavens and the earth stopped. He says, call him. And he asked Batmius, what do you want? You know, it baffles me. The creator of the heavens and the earth, you know what he wants. Why asking questions? Can, can, let me ask your neighbor, say, why are you here for real? For, don't tell me, don't tell me. I, I, do you know why you are here? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Because at the end of the day, the man that has blind for 40 years began to see. Everything that you have not seen in your business, everything that you have not seen in Nigeria, Everything that is not seen in your circle of incense, God will open your eyes. You will see them in the name of Jesus. 
Psalm 126, verse 1 and 2, it says, When the Lord turned the captivity of Zion, Ooh. we are like them that dream. Amen? We are like them that, and people say unto us, see what God has done. That's going to be your story in the name of Jesus. But the example we are looking at today is about Israel and Samuel and Ebenezer. Quickly, when we said Ebenezer, Ebenezer can be a place of battle. Any battle you are engaging, you are going to win. You see, very few people say, everybody in life, life happens to people. Whether you are Pentecostal or Pentecostal, life happens. Look at your neighbor, say, life happens. There are battles you will fight. There are battles you are fighting. But may I tell you, sir, every battle you engage in, you will win. I said you will win. Ebenezer can be a point of loss or defeat. You are not going to be defeated. You are not going to lose in the name of Jesus. Ultimately, Ebenezer means God's help. I release help from the Trinity into your life. I release help from heaven unto you. I release help from the earth unto you. Everything that God has created, they will help you in the name of Jesus. And Ebenezer means, he that told the Lord has helped me. He will help you in Jesus' name. I said the Lord will help you in Jesus' name. There are some lessons you want to learn about the people of Israel and Samuel. And number one, the number one, number one, can you help me read what he says? The enemy is always where? Say it one more time. When you look at that first Samuel chapter 7, verse 7, it says, When the Philistines heard that the children of Israel were gathered together at Mizpah, the Lord of the Philistines went up against Israel. And when the children of Israel heard it, they were afraid. What are we saying there? Listen and listen to me very well. The devil doesn't care that you are you go to party last night. The devil doesn't care that you are fighting your enemy. But the day the enemy hears that you are coming to church, the day the enemy hears you are making a commitment to God, the day the enemy hears that you are going to go on evangelism, you are pissing up the enemy. While Israel, for 20 years, we are serving idols, Philistines doesn't care. While Israel was migmarolling in sin, the enemy doesn't care. But immediately, the Philistines had they at Mizpah. They want to call God. They want to serve God. Say, ah, let's face up battle. So let me tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor, the battle you are fighting is because you are near to God. And don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. God is nearer than the enemies in the name of Jesus. You will win. You will win. I say you will win. The question is, why now? Why are they coming now? In 20 years, while Israel played religion and wallowed in adultery, the Philistines bothered them little or nothing at all. But as soon as Israelites in a national repentance involving all began the relevant step towards God, the Philistines began to react. Let me pray for your neighbor. Hold your hands. Hold your hands. Say, I pray for you in the name of Jesus. All the turmoils, all the battles that you are going through, just chill, chill, chill. The Lord is on your side. I say you will win. I say you will win. It's a sign that you are closer to God. You are going to win. I say you are going to win. I say you are going to win. In the name of Jesus. It appears the Philistines often stay close enough to monitor development in Israel so as to know when to strike. But when they strike, they will fail. I said the arrow will return back to the sender. I said the arrow will return back to the sender. In the name of Jesus. You know, when you read 2 Samuel chapter 5, verse 17 to 21, when you read that first Samuel, second Samuel, it says, when the Philistines heard 
that they anointed David, king of Israel. All the physicians came together to seek David. While he was a shepherd boy, nobody cared. But the day they anointed David as king, the Philistines gather. Ah, you are not going to reign in peace. You are in trouble. Tell the devil, back to the sender. I say, back to the sender. You will not frustrate me. I say, you will not frustrate me. I will serve God. I will follow God in the name of Jesus. So number one, number one is what? Before you shout, Ebenezer, you must realize that the enemy is staying very very close. Do you know that the difference between light and darkness is a very fine line? Amen. Immediately light disappears. What happened to darkness? Uninvited, they will come. But immediately light comes. What happened to darkness? Hold your neighbors and say, I decree light into your life. I decree light into your marriage in the name of Jesus. Number two now, you need a prophet. Can you say it with me? You need a prayer partner. Say it to me again. In 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 8. 1 Samuel 7, 8. Can you help me read it once you go? You can see it on the screen. Read it once you go. And the children of Israel said to Samuel, what now? You know, the Bible says in Matthew chapter 18, verse 19, it says, again, I say unto you, if you shall agree on earth as touching anything they ask, it shall be done unto you. Sir, there is power in finding a prayer partner to work with. Yes, we have a prophet. We have our father in the Lord. He's living at the camp or redemption city. Amen. But it's not every day you can call Daddy Jew and say, Daddy Jew, pray for me. Amen? You need a prayer partner. Hello? Maybe you don't understand my grammar. Tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, you need a prayer partner. The Bible says one we chase a thousand. And two we do what? Put 10,000 to fly. Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 30. Deuteronomy 32 30. He said, how shall one chase a thousand and two put ten thousand to flight except the rock that I hold them and the Lord has shut them up. Please sir, there are some prayer you pray alone that God answers. But there are some prayer you pray alone that you need an enforcement. You need a partner, a friend. You remember we discussed with a friend yesterday? Amen? Lee Ayakoka said in your lifetime if you have three friends, you have made it in life. Can I ask, how many friends do you have? How many of you have one friend? No, don't lie, don't lie. Only one person. <laughs> Two friends. Real, genuine friends that you can commit your life to. That knows everything about you and can defend you. How many of you have two friends? Ah. Only two people. How many of you have three friends? Only one person. Pray for your neighbor. Say, neighbor, I pray for you. If you are looking for a friend, I'm available. I will be your ally. I will be your prayer partner. Can you trust me? And can I trust you? Shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah. It is spiritual arrogance. For you not to have a prayer partner. Amen. What did I say? Spirit. When you feel too big for yourself and say, no, I can't do it by myself, the devil will smash you because there are some prayers you pray alone that God will say, you need somebody. You need reinforcement. You need, like Joshua, men of war, that when the battle comes and say, for seven days, we are not eating. We are going to pray together. And when you pray, God will answer by fire. Do you know, sir, Apostle Paul, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, this is a man who has gone to the second heaven. This is a man who has written over 80% of the New Testament. He said, finally, my brethren, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1, he says, pray for us that the word of the Lord will have a free cause and be glorified. 
even as it is with you. Amen. Our brother, I don't know whether it is the first session or second, second session, while he was praying, he quoted Hosea chapter 12, verse 13. Hosea 12, 13. He said, by a prophet, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. And by a prophet, he was preserved. I pray for you today in the name of Jesus. I pray for you. May God give you a prayer partner. May you pray for your pastors. May you pray for your leaders. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 138 verse 8. Psalm 138 verse 8. Amen. Psalm 138 verse 8. He says, what shall I pray for? Amen. He says, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Amen. I will not forsake the work of his hand. Amen. Can't you hold your neighbor's hand? Hold your neighbor's hand. Say, I pray for you. You are my prayer partner now. You are my prayer project, at least for the next few minutes. I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The almighty God, the God of RCCG, we perfect everything that concerns you. The mercy of the Lord will speak for you in the name of Jesus. The Lord will not forsake you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, so it shall be. In the name of God the Father, in the name of God the Son, in the name of God the Holy Spirit. Amen. So number one, number one, what's number one now? Point number one. The enemy is always near. Number two, you need a prophet, you need a prayer partner, and may God give you one in the name of Jesus. Number three is repentance. Let's say that together. Ebenezer means a point of appeal of mercy. A place where you call upon God for mercy. After Israel came to their senses and began to thirst for God, and their heart began to pant after God, Prophet Samuel called a solemn assembly and urged the people to put away their physical idols as well the idols in their heart. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 3, 28, verse 3. It says, and your heaven, the heaven above you, amen, thy head shall be brass. Why? Because there is no repentance. If you pray and answer does not come, it's because you have not repented. Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7. Isaiah 55, verse 6 to 7. It says, seek the Lord. Help me read it. Help me read it. It's on the screen once you go. Let the wicked do what? And the righteous man is. And let him do what? And he will do what? He will have mercy. And to our God, he will abundantly do what? He will abundantly do what? Every time you go to God, you remember the bad news that we talk about in Mark chapter 10. When he heard that Jesus was passing by, what was he crying? I am received of Abraham. I deserve healing. Jesus, I am here. Is that what he said? What did he say? I can't hear you. What did he say? Can I tell you the secret of answered prayers? By the special grace of God, my first daughter went to a very specialized university. Finished, went and do her master's at the University of Chicago. Very smart girl. And after she finished, I was thinking everybody will recruit her. We are looking. Nothing happened. I pray all the kind of prayer I will pray. I say, God, I pay my tithe. God, I do what is needed. I'm a child of God. What's going on? Answer does not come. But one morning, I wake up in the morning and I flat flight on my face. And I say, God, mercy. Not because of the tithe. I need mercy. I need mercy. I've been serving you since 1975. This is my daughter. Please, oh God, have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Because it is not of him that will it, or of him that run it, but it's of God that. So that week, she got a job. And I was wondering, where was the job before? It's not because of your righteousness, oh. It's not because of the title. It's not because he came to church regularly. But because of 
you know there are two sides to God. God is a God of love. Right? John 3.16. The other side, according to Hebrews, our God is a consuming fire. One side of the God is what? Love. The other side is what? But the edge of the coin that connects the mercy of God and the love of God is mercy. Can I hear what? Raise up your two hands. I don't know what you are asking God for. Say, my father, my father, I need mercy. I need mercy. I need mercy. Mercy, mercy, mercy. Please, Lord, let your mercy speak to me. Lord, let your mercy defend me. Lord, 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 I need your mercy. I need your mercy. I need your mercy. I need your mercy. Mercy, 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 oh God. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. Have mercy, have mercy, have mercy. In Jesus' name we have prayed. There was an apostles gathering. Our father in the Lord was invited with all the eminent apostles in the world. And they said they are going to pray for three hours. And that individual should pray. There was one rascal apostle there. He says, I have heard that the Jew pray all night long. Amen. I ain't going to pray. I want to be close to Daddy Joe and find out what is he praying about. Amen. And for the next three hours, you know what our father is crying about? Mercy. Lord, not that he has committed any sin, no. Not that he's looking for another man's wife, oh. Not that he has not evangelized, so. Oh. Not that he has not paid his title. Oh. What was he praying for 33 hours? Raise up your two hands again for the next one minute. Say, Lord, all I need, all I need, all I need, oh God, is mercy. In the morning, mercy. In the afternoon, mercy. In the evening, mercy. Over my children, mercy. Over my husband, mercy. Over my wife, mercy. Over your church, have mercy. In my going out, mercy. In my traveling, mercy, 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 mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Today, oh God, have mercy. Throughout today, oh God, mercy, 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 mercy. Mercy, 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 Lord, mercy, mercy on me, mercy, mercy, oh God, mercy, 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 mercy. I want to shout hallelujah, God, if you don't have mercy, if the Lord does mark iniquity, who can stand? Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. As you have prayed, God will answer your prayers. May all answers to your prayer be answered by hallelujah. It shall be answered by hallelujah. It shall be answered by hallelujah. So number one, number one, the enemy is always near. Number two, you need a prayer partner. You need a prophet. Number three is what? Repentance and mercy. Number four, there is a God in the heavens. You are going to have a divine intervention today. Whether the devil likes it or not, you are going to have divine intervention. The quickly, how did the story end for the enemy? You remember the Philistines were near. Immediately they heard that the Israelites are gathered together. They ran quickly. Get the arsenals together. Get their weapons together. How did the story end for the enemy? With their laws. Who chose to draw near against God's altar in what they thought was a prime time? And it turned out to be the worst timing. Oh, the devil is in trouble. I said the devil is in trouble. The worst timing for the enemy is to attack you when you are in the house of God. How did the story end for those who felt that they possessed enough political power, 
enough military might to decide what happened to Israel in respect to the relationship of God. The table turned around. I can see everything turning around, turning around for my good. Can you stand up and sing that song? Because I can see the enemy running away now. I can yes. see the enemy running away. Can somebody shout hallelujah? Can I hear your victory? Hallelujah. Can I hear your victory? Hallelujah. Choir, I want to sing that song. I can see everything. Turning around. Turning around. Turning around for my Say I can see everything. Turning around. See everything, no. Turning around. Turning around. Oh my. Can you see everything? Turning around. They are turning around. Turning around. Turning around. Turning around. Oh my. Oh, we can see failure. Turning around. Turning to success. Turning around. In the name of Jesus. Oh my. We can see disappointment. Turning around. Turning to appointment. Turning around for oh my good. Can you see everything? Turning around. Turning around. Turning around. Yeah. Turning around for oh my good. Raise up and say, my father, my father. By the reason of my hallelujah, let everything turn around. Turn around, turn around, turn around, turn around. Failure to success, sorrow to joy. In the name of Jesus, let everything turn around for my good. In the name of Jesus, I will not fail again. I will not turn back again. I will not lack again. I will not beg again. In the name of Jesus, disappoint the counsel of the enemy. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, turning around, turning around, turning around, turning around. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Number five now, number five, restoration and recovery. Help me read that for Samuel, chapter 7, verse 14. Read verse 14 for me. Then the cities, I can't hear you. Okay, you can't say, okay, let's read 13 and 14 together. One, two, go. So the Philistines were what? Every Philistines of your life shall be subdued. Your amen is not born again. And what happened now? They did not come anymore, 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 anymore into the territory of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of their life. And what do you think they are singing? What do you think they are shouting? I said, what are they shouting? What are they shouting? You know, the God that I serve is a God of too much. Victory alone is enough. Amen. That they are not returning is enough. That throughout the days of Samuel, no more battle is enough. But no, 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 God doesn't stop for when he starts to pour oil on you, he continues to pour on the all runs over. Now, what else did he do? Verse 14. Look at verse 14. Verse 14. Read it for me. One, two, go. The cities were what? Restored. And Israel recovered. I pray for you. This will be your testimony. For the rest of this year. Your enemies will be made to, they be forced to make peace with you. And your enemies shall be silenced permanently in the name of Jesus. So the question is, what is the difference between restoration and recovery? Restoration, the enemy is compelled. The enemy is mandated. The enemy is forced to return what he has forcefully taken away. Amen? Purely divine intervention. You don't have to do anything. Amen. How many of you want restoration? No, 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 no. You didn't hear me. You didn't hear me. You don't have to fight in the battle. You just sit down in your house. And they say, ah, we are sorry, sir. Ah, we didn't pay the no salary. Here is your tear rubber jeep. Amen. Oh, who is that person I'm talking about? 
I only talk about one Jeepo. Amen. <laughs> Restoration, you don't have to do anything. But when it comes to recovery, you have to put in an effort. At times, God allows the two, both restoration and recovery to occur at the same time. Just to show that you have a part to play. Amen. When God gives you the spoils, you have to go and gather it. Amen. When God gives you the victory, can, can I ask a stupid question? If God gives you a five-bedroom house in Ikoyi or in Aja, five-car garage, fully packed, tear rubber, will you come to church next Sunday? No, 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 no. You didn't hear my question. You didn't hear my question. Uh, you didn't hear my question. Amen. They are calling you at Geneva for a meeting. They are calling you at Dallas for another meeting. They are calling you at London for another meeting. How many of you? We say, I, I, I remember. I go. How many of you say, God, please, the meeting can wait. I'm going to TOD. You see, only three hands. <laughs> I pray for you in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord will give you restoration. The Lord will give you recovery. In the name of Jesus. Psalm 144 verse 1 says, Blessed be the Lord my rock, who trains my hand for war, and my fingers for battle. You know, as I was praying early this morning, the Lord says, this second service is your hour of recovery. Your hour of restoration. Clap your hands together. Amen. Put you together like a prayer and say, my father, my father, I decree, restore joy. Restore open heavens, restore dreams, restore miracles, restore visions, restore signs and wonders. Pray that prayer for one minute quickly. Restore, 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 joy, open heavens, visions, dreams, miracles, signs, wonders. In the name of Jesus, as you have prayed, so it shall be. The name of God the Father, the name of God the Son, the name of God the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The last point, quickly sit down. We are about to end. I have two more minutes. Every man is thanksgiving, thanksgiving, thanksgiving. We are going to sing a song. I don't know whether you know it. It says, Praise ye the Lord, be free at last, glory, oh, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Praise ye the Lord, victory at last, glory, oh, hallelujah. Listen and listen to me very well. Every man of gratitude is a man of altitude. Because your capacity for gratitude determines your altitude. Amen. Is it on the screen here? Amen. The position you do not appreciate will never change for the better. Can you put it on the screen? Help me read it. Help me read it. Once you go. Every man is a man of because your capacity for gratitude determines what? Amen. How many of you have received your miracle today? How many of you know that you have been restored? Amen. Restoration. Restoration. In the name of Jesus. Because your capacity for gratitude determines your altitude. Read it for me. The position you did not appreciate will never do what? This is a heavenly demand on every believer. A life of thanks and praise to him, our maker. The word Judah in Hebrew means yada, which is interpreted as praise. Giving thanks, giving reference, giving adoration, shouting hallelujah to our God. Our God appreciates praise and thanks. This can be seen throughout the New Testament. So we are all going to stand up now and we are going to sing, jubilating that yes, God has answered your prayers. Praise the Lord, victory at last, glory, oh, hallelujah, glory, hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord, victory at last.
ולא 